it's it's actually far more onerous now um, to just take on an employee than it, than it ever used to be, um, particularly with things like the pensions. And um, there were some scarce there were some scare stories on that when it first came out when auto enrollment came out, which um, effectively means that the employ employers are are compulsory have to pay a contribution to um, um, to pensions, assuming that the employee hasn't opted out of, of pensions auto enrollment and um, the the employer has to decide well which pension scheme am I going to put money in into hello and uh, welcome to this edition of the Davis Grant podcast to mark national payroll week which this year is celebrating the contribution of payroll professionals as key workers especially during the coronavirus crisis i'm joined by stephen sanford who's the director at davis grant to talk about the great work that the payroll team has been doing for you here at davis grant hello stephen hi hi nick how you doing yeah i'm good today i'm good today so um we, we'll go straight in uh, um to the discussion but uh, can we begin by talking about uh, what lockdown like has been for you and the, the rest of the team there at Davis Grant? Um, it's been an it's been an, um, a very very interesting, crazy, stressful, um, inspiring, every sort of adjective you can you can think of during this during this period. I mean, you know, obviously none of us could have foreseen this, and and the government, to their credit have done some amazing initiatives um, a lot of them falling within the realms of payroll and for employees of those companies it's been fantastic um, for us as payroll providers we have had to a real challenge to both uh, make sure we were up to date on everything that was going on all the legislation every day there seems to be something new coming out and also process the payrolls with those changes and um, in the case of for example, furlough, get that, get the payments um, out to the clients as quickly as possible, who, who were really desperate for, for that money. So on a, on a um, I know, well, I can tell our audience that Davis Grant has been open, fully open throughout the, throughout the, the crisis. In fact, I would say we've, ne we've, we've never been busier. Um, but uh, can you say how, can you clue us in on exactly how has the team coped with kind of, team members being working from home and um, the, the office has been closed but it's starting to reopen now right yeah uh, I mean, it's, it's, no, it's a good it's a good question I mean we, we're fortunate but we've always at David Scrum whether it's because of our client some of our client base or, or, or what or what but we've always been far far more technologically advanced than you know um, um, always looking always looking ahead and therefore um, we've been effectively although although physically in the office and, and very much an office-based company nevertheless we've had all the technology that's, that has really allowed us to be remote working for some time so we for example we already had microsoft teams working in the office it was an internal communication tool um, but that has really expanded into its own with remote working we already had um, everyone logging in cloud-based into the into their servers and we, we had a number of the team who would work from home on occasion and so we did have the, the tools, but um, yeah, it's uh, an interesting challenge for everyone to work from home. We, we made sure, I think the biggest thing was, was actually one of my fellow partners had sort of predicted what may have happened. And we had to order um, probably about a dozen new laptops um, for the team that didn't perhaps have the technology at home and made sure certain team members had the right desks and they could get their chairs delivered from the office and, <laughs> and things like that to make sure they had the best working environment but but luckily thank god touch wood um yeah it was it was able to be a relatively smooth process brilliant so uh, yeah so the entire team which is around it's over 30 people at davis grant really isn't it the entire team has been kept working and in fact working harder as we're going to cover in the rest of this podcast throughout the lockdown and really delivering on 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 what what clients need do, do you think that um it's fair to say that accountants and specifically the payroll people uh, could be classed as key workers during during this crisis yeah i mean it's interesting i know and uh, you know thinking thinking about it and it's something that i have read and seen elsewhere but i mean on on the one hand um look key work you know they're not they're not going into Team, we're not going into any vulnerable situations, so it would be, uh, you know, 
foolish or, or, or you know crazy to com even remotely compare to the health workers and 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 and, and, and teachers and, and things like that. Nevertheless, nevertheless, actually, for people to get paid, and especially where they didn't know where they were getting you know money money from, and for businesses to survive, and they had to get these furlough claims, and 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 whether we talk about it later, just what initially HMRC launched and how um, rough and ready that was. Um, and what we had to do and, and the investment we had to put in to get people, employees to be paid and employers to be paid. Um, um, I guess, I guess we have, we have really, I guess I can look at it that way that we have really helped businesses to, to continue. Mm, no, I can, I can see that. And I, I agree with you that, you know, I don't think the work that we're doing is on the same level as NHS workers, but one thing that I realized very early on in lockdown is that, that, that tax deadlines and people's need to get paid were going to still continue on. And we've seen some government schemes that have pushed on things such as the deferral of, the of payment, payment on accounts and things like that. But, um, you know, life has had to go on, hasn't it? I mean, we touched on the, the furlough scheme there. Would you say that's the biggest challenge, um, the biggest thing that's changed, the biggest challenge that we've had to deal with? I think it's a few things. Um, that that's obviously that's obviously the biggest challenge because it 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 when it came in and it's not the government's fault at all, but it didn't come in what I call clean. Um, they had to you know H HMRC had to build a system from scratch within a matter of weeks, and it didn't come in with on on a you know the first of the month that would have been helpful. It came in. I think it was. Uh, you know, mid month, nineteenth of, of the month, or something like that. Um, of March seems a, seems a distant memory now. Nineteenth of March, um, but um, yeah, that that the furlough was hard, and of course, and and sadly, now as as we're, we're now entering September, and and furlough is starting to taper off, um, is is sadly redundancies, and you know those you know those sectors that perhaps uh, are impacted then that's you know the redundancies and seeing what's happening and people's notice period and how does that work um potentially companies having to close close down that's then the other side and the, and, and perhaps the sadder impact of, of, of payroll during this period yeah i i i guess i'm from a external point of view um, it's been interesting to see that and, and we do, I know we've had, we do have information if anyone's uh, watching or listening uh, on the common pitfalls with redundancies and also the, the changes with the furlough scheme, which of course is, is still running, but is changing until it ends in October. Um, but Stephen, do you think that, um, do you think it's made a big difference to, the, to, to our clients uh, to have the support of the payroll team in this period? Oh. Um, without question, I mean, I've always said certainly with our payroll team. I mean, uh, I have for, for better or for worse, I just celebrated my twentieth anniversary at Davis Grant. Um, and I've uh, thank you. And I've seen uh, many, um, you know, um, just so many changes. And you know, back in the day, our payroll team were just were just that. It was it was strangely it go back twenty years. It was more automated, funny enough, than it is today. In that today, our payroll team were almost de facto. HR people, they're asked, they're asked, it's not just, can you put this person on this salary? This is the amount, you know, run the payroll. You know, that's just an, a, almost a minute part. It's, it's questions on pensions. When do they come in? We had auto enrollment last year um, to keep track of that and what the contributions are. That's, that's, What's pensions, notice, isn't it? Pensions that's with pensions. Yeah. And then obviously more, you know, more prevalent now, you know, what's a notice period, um, how much do we have to pay them? What's termination payments? What's the tax treatment of those? And, and these things that these things are coming up in addition to the mix of furlough. And I mean, and, and especially for example, the last couple of months where this now this flexi furlough has suddenly appeared. We just thought we were all getting <laughs> getting sorted with it. And of course, and you can understand again, the government, I told you, you know, they wanted to get people gradually coming back to work and employers may have not been able to pay fully for, for team members to come back to work um, so they can afford a few few days a week. But that has, again, um, caused huge complications in, in, in the calculations of how people get paid. And, and, then, and then also then for us to do the claims for clients on behalf on, on HMRC's portal. No, yeah, and, 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 yeah I, can, I can understand that that's, uh, 
a, a massive area um, and clearly it's made a big difference to, to clients. I think it, it's interesting from my point of view to see a which is a kind of overall thing rather than we're focusing quite specifically today is that the, some of the things that you talked about there are universal across Davis Grant which is it's not just about the numbers it's not just about the tax return or the, the pay slip in this case it is about really understanding your business um, and our payroll team it sounds like they well I know they, they go the extra mile to really kind of get to know the business and, and, and help out Absolutely. with with detailed advice not just no you're right I mean I mean Fun enough, Nick. I mean, just just I'll tell you this anecdote. Just anecdotally, I mean, we're having a number of of inquiries from clients who, I guess, in this remote working time, their um, their em employees are looking to base themselves in in other countries, and and they're coming to us again to say, you know, what would be the tax implications of someone based in the Netherlands uh, but still want to work for the UK company or or, or in Spain or wherever wherever it may be. Um, so yes, long since uh, you know, long ago, it's, it's a case of just here's the employee, this is the salary they're on. Please run the payroll. Um, far, far more than that. Far more strategic, and far more involved in the actual decision making. That actually says, well, uh, what would be the tax costs? Um, what would be the implications of certain things? Look, we're not we're not HR advisors, but our knowledge and our experience allows us to to draw on that and, and really you know give clients. You know, real pertinent advice and obviously particularly tax advice yeah so i guess um I, I i particularly think when i think of the different types of client that we, we've got i guess there have been uh people during this period who have maybe a small payroll that they've been managing themselves and it's quite simple um and they've had to and because either they're furloughing themselves or they're furloughing the staff that previously handled their payroll they, they they've been at they've had to turn to us um, for assistance with that. Do you think that's generally true? Um, yes, uh, well, they have, they, have, they have turned to us. The, the, certainly, the, the, you know, look, essentially with a small business, payroll it, you know, it, it's a very small, small part and, and almost potentially a distraction for someone that's, that's concentrating on their business. And do they have the time or the energy with everything else that's going on to keep up to date with every sort of legislative change, every new guidance, this is how you calculate it, employers, national insurance, how's that calculated in the furlough, in, in this, that and the other. I mean, we're fortunate, you know, you know for Davis Grant, we've got, um, you know, a, a good sized payroll team, but it wasn't just the payroll team who were having to keep up to date, the five partners, a number of our managers as well. So we could draw on, you know, 10 or so people that were all keeping up to date as information was being released um, to then draw that on, collaborate, share knowledge and, and, and put together sort of best practice for us and our clients. And um, it, would, it would actually scare me, um, I'll be honest, <laughs> apart from the hassle for a, a person to be, be someone who was just by themselves and were trying to do the payroll, payroll, payroll themselves. Yeah. And, and um, massive kudos to the core payroll team um, who, you know, I think it would make sense to name check Charlene, the manager, Jazz, the supervisor, and also Claire, who's um, the payroll agent, one of the, the payroll agents. But you're right that 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 it's been a it's been a team effort as well, and and uh, that that's what you get with Davis Grant. Is you get kind of the, there is the depth of resource. So when it became uh, necessary, it's kind of team swelled with both qualified and and kind of part qualified members of the team who coming over. Um, do you, well, what kind of, you were speaking about anecdotal stuff before, what kind of anecdotal feedback have you had from client, your clients about, about their experience with the payroll team or, or, or furlough? Is there anything? Um, anything? It's, yeah, it's actually been, um, I have to say, really, really lovely. Um, and, um, and quite unusual, considering the stress that... Um, that, that they were, they you know, the businesses were, were under. I think they actually appreciate very much appreciated that we were in a similar boat. We're also running a business. We also had things to, um, um, you know, situations to to, to deal with um, ourselves. And so they, I, I think, clients were particularly understanding during during those months. And at the same time, and also particularly grateful 
Um, you know, we we got um, cl claims, furlough claims out to them. Um, I would hope pretty much in record time um, and really had prioritized that. In fact, so much so um, that actually um, to make sure that clients got them, myself and one of my other partners, Ben, were um, for a number of evenings, because we just didn't have time in the day, we would um, be <laughs> submitting furlough claims for our clients from sort of five o'clock to, I don't know, whatever silly time in the evening um, to, to do that, that took perhaps a little bit of the, the, the stress and the burden from the payroll team who were actually dealing with some complex calculations and things like that, and also make sure that the clients were, were, were getting the payments from, from HMRC. Yeah, well, thank you very much for your work there. I'm sure there are people listening who, who want me to thank everyone who's been involved. Um, in in making sure that pa the payroll work that we've been doing over the last couple of months has been on time and and solid and and, and, and everything, especially given what you were saying before about HMS, HMRC system being being kind of developed as the work was going ahead. What do you think of the pitfalls having submitted um, those claims that 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 people who haven't that business owners might have, might fall into if they haven't had expert help uh, particularly i'm thinking about the, the furlough scheme um well there's two parts to it one is the actual calculation um itself and then there's the sub then there was the submission to hmrc and i mean without boring people of the, of the in-depth calculations the key part certainly in the first sort of three four months was the and, and especially when when people were were being put onto furlough and they say the issues were one if it happened part way through a month that caused huge complications with with aspects such as employers national insurance and pension and also working out how to pro rate the days and and um and then um what their salary what how much of their salary was um was furlough whether they were being topped up by their employer a lot of people were just paying 80 percent uh, other employers were were topping up and, and a, a lot of clarity and a lot of mistakes could be done because when you've got to do things when you're under under pressure and speed um, mistakes you know are potentially to happen but we we we, we um we looked at it in, in some detail and and these are the uh, and uh, you know we were able to to do this and, and submit it and in good time and um and accurately and so these these are the areas that i think if someone was looking at it themselves um, for sure, they'll have a, a, a good stab at it, and, and if people are, you know, intelligent enough, they'll give it a good go. Whether it was correct, um, one doesn't, you know, one doesn't know. Um, HMRC have said that they will be, you know, when when the dust settles, whenever that is, they are going to be looking at many, many, many claims and seeing how it was charged. Because, I mean, not just for technical mistakes, but also for fraud as well. And so. Um, you know that, that will that will happen, and they may look at that as as potentially easy pickings down the line next year. But um, no, as, so as of yet, they're still. So as an as an employer, it, it would have been. It sounds like it would have been quite easy to make mistakes, um, and in the rush of everything, maybe uh, not have gone back and, and looked at kind of over claims or under claims and, and addressed that. I know that that's something that our payroll department has been doing. And I guess that's something we can sign place to people is to say, if you know, if you're unsure, it might be worth, um, you know, asking us to have a look over things or, or to just to be sure, because I understand there is an opportunity to kind of make things right. Um, but you want to make sure you, you get that in within the window and, uh, and, and kind of future proof you against any future investigation, which is something that at Davis Grant, we're, we're, we're very practiced at dealing with kind of investigations from HMRC, aren't we? Yeah, not that we make any mistakes, but we're used to. <laughs> but no, we're used to. Not, we're used to no, but nevertheless, HMRC. Yeah, but look, as, look HMRC, you know, uh, always do you know aspect inquiries regardless of any of any people say. So yeah, no, we're we're very uh, comfortable and, and familiar in that respect. No, understood. You know, very very important to make clear that uh, that uh, Davis Grant doesn't have a high rate of investigations, <laughs> but for those that will happen yep. um, and do happen. Uh, we've got a very good 100% record in, in dealing with them. No, correct, because a lot, a lot of them, exactly, investigations are made up of, of two things. Some are, some are, um, 
are specific because there's certain flags that have been that have been identified in their system with their, their algorithms and others are just purely aspect random inquiries that can happen from time to time and in fact um it's something i mean just i just slightly digress but um it's one of the things one of the services that we have is a sort of a fee protection cover um because um and that covers clients for sort of any fees for inquiries because that's it however much we do a good job uh, nevertheless hmrc can just decide to do a, a random aspect inquiry on all of their affairs not just say payroll on, on, on across the board so um and those fee that, that sort of cover small cover covers really all of our time and fees and uh, you know in that in those situations yeah no i think no thank you for thank you for making that clear and actually i think it's important that we do look outside it not everything is about uh, coronavirus support at the moment um, you know, I, I think I think it'd be interesting right now to get your opinion on kind of on a more general basis why it's important. Um, you know, what are the benefits to people of, of, of um, the specific benefits of outsourcing their payroll to us um, that you might be able to highlight? Yeah, I mean, look, we we act for I think it's probably around three hundred and fifty payrolls. So we you know we're able to draw on on that knowledge pull that resource so therefore if a situation arises on one client it's highly highly likely it has already um, occurred somewhere else and so we're able to draw and pull on those resources i always say to clients not just with you know with payroll with with other with other services but perhaps particular payroll is of a particular um, focus which is that if you as business owners or running a business, you know, um, you want to deal with what, what, um, what your expertise is, is in and you want to de-risk um, areas that perhaps have, have high risk um, to you. So for me, I would always, if, if I outsource anything, it would probably be the payroll because I would say making sure my employees get paid accurately without recompense and issues down the line, keeping my, employees and team happy um, is probably number one um, you know um, in, in my rank in my rank of things uh, of, and that could also be hassle and issues so so for sure that that would be something the, the risk of, of making errors um, can, can can be very very problematic and so I, I would strongly advocate that yeah I think I think that's always it's always important to stress from my point of view that, that with Davis grant people get you know there is the foundation is this solid um, accounting, you know, there is just a, a real accuracy to it. But I think we touched on earlier on, uh, on the kind of extra qualities that, that the Davis Grant team have in terms of kind of putting on top of it that personal bit of advice. Is there anything specifically you would highlight from the, the core payroll team, you know, qualities that you think really stand them in good stead and that we, we, we could really highlight as praising them for? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good question. Number one, and there's something that shouldn't be taken for granted, is that, and I'm in the office today, is that all of our payroll team are here in our office. Um, they're all, and they're all, all happen to be all in today, but, but pre, pre-COVID, we're all here. You know, our payroll isn't, we're not a front Davis Grant to then outsource it somewhere else. These are real people that we've recruited, that we work with, um, you know, um, every day. And, um, and, and, as, and as a result, we, we know and we train them and mould them into how we, we call the Davis Grant way. And one of the key things Davis Grant is, is, um, is customer service. We want the, the, the clients to be, you know, super happy with our service, that we go, that we go above above and beyond i know it's cliche but it's true to go above and above and beyond but the way we have set up we have a dedicated sort of payroll inbox that the clients will email the payroll inbox and it will stay sort of you know um, unread and some and whoever is the first one in the payroll team to to look at it will will, will deal with that and for sure i mean we have a sort of a maximum turnaround of 24 hours but um to get back to someone but um but um you know invariably it's far 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 quicker than that to get back to clients and in fact as i said you know all joking aside the actual production of the payroll is you know is a is a, a percentage but not the vast the majority of it it is the dealing with the questions the queries the things that come up um broader than that but perhaps 
either other payroll bureaus might not have that expertise um you know and certainly people in-house won't have that breadth um so they may know how to enter something into a system and type in someone's paye code and produce something but i say the questions as i mentioned before on what's the statutory rules on on payments in lieu of notice what's the, what's the rules on pension how do you auto enroll how do i you know who do you re who do you recommend all those sorts of questions which are which are far beyond just producing payroll is is what we do so we really feel it's a a real sort of holistic um you know um relationship with clients and that, that leads me on to one of the questions that i had which was for the audience uh, kind of top tips for them making the most out of the support that, that's on offer um, and you touched on there you know there's email support so um, you know you can email the payroll department i know that the email address is payroll at davisbrand.co.uk um, with questions and, and, and someone from the team will get back to you promptly and i guess um, and the other thing to stress maybe uh, and i'd like your take on this it always feels um, a lot of the message that I'm trying to, to communicate to clients is to, to really loop us in as early as possible and really um, for, for people to, business owners to, to be open but, uh, and communicative uh, with the team. I think we've, we've seen that with furlough in specifically and I know I've seen we're, we're, we're proactively asking people what their plans are earlier on in the month. Um, do you think that's that's a real thing with payroll, especially when you know it's a real big monthly cycle? Um, um, yeah, that's no, it's a good point. It, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a good good point. Good question. I think um, look, every client probably thinks that they're 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 our only client, <laughs> and it's really human human nature. And and perhaps as I said, don't appreciate you know why would they um, that we've got three hundred you know two hundred ninety or whatever three hundred clients. Um, but also that we need to assist with their payroll. And, 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 and indeed, it's, it's our aim to make them feel like they are. Correct. They, yeah, they no, are absolutely. our only client, so it's perfectly natural. You're right. And so, um, and so yeah, that being said, if, every, if, if all of those clients all sent their payroll in with two days to go before they need to get paid, you know, it would be impossible and we'd be set up, we'd be set up for failure and, and the clients would be unhappy and so on and so forth. So, yeah, very much, look, you know, we strongly encourage clients to get the best service from us is send your information in good time because then one you know look again we are human as much as we say we don't make mistakes if it's something that's given to us in the 11th hour and you need to get something done and quickly and out um you know there's a higher percentage of chance that a human error mistake could be made and not picked up something so someone's figure someone left something like that if we get it in good time a number of weeks before we can then look at it there's enough time we have an extensive review process it i think not only does it get um quality reviewed it then gets double quality reviewed um and so you know those things those processes need time to to allow the, the quality review and, and, and second reviews even after that to happen and so the earlier we can get payrolls then the more time there is to do that and make sure that when the when the employees get them then they're then they're received correct accurately um and, and promptly yeah that, i think that's that's not too much to ask and, and it's good to kind of lift the lid a little bit there so i feel like we've, we've covered the past uh, uh the you know the work that we've done and we've covered the present and what people can do to really help us out right now and really get the most out of their payroll team so i think it's important that we touch on the future and, and the challenges that are coming uh, in the, the next few months um do you think uh well i th i personally think and i'll put it to you as a statement that that you know having davis grant to to pull on will really set will really set business owners in good stead um in in say harder times to come uh do you think that's that's particularly true and what what do you think the focuses are going to be over the over the coming months um well focuses for coming months so just just as a point from davis grant um, we've actually recruited an additional member of the team into payroll um so we've actually invested in that um uh, amber um who, who who's joined us um and because you know we are seeing an, an ever-increasing demand in in our services which is 
which is lovely um, and, and we feel therefore it's time to um, to invest in that so from a from us um, per personally um, it's very much an area of growth for, for the business and for the firm um, from a technical perspective this is as furlough um, unwinds it's going to become it's still continue trickier and I would be lying if um, if I said our payroll team weren't ha counting down to the end of October <laughs> when, uh, when furlough when furlough ends, I, I apologise for any employees listening to this that that's their worst nightmare. But I've, uh, you know, from our pay payroll team, you know, it's let's get to the end of October. We've got to get through it. Get through it. That's really the. And then, the, and then, uh, and, and, but what, but what if uh, Rishi Sunak announces a three-month extension? No, I'm tempting fate. Right no, um, so that would then, be lovely. Course, for but then, but then, for, look, and then for for actual employers, the, the the big the big thing is going to be, of course, is is initially redundancies. And, and the changes there and, and, and employers and companies looking at their teams are really, you know, as the government support um, uh, unwinds, is, is looking at can they really justify having those employees in this very sad situation. Um, but that's the sort of things that they will need and, and different people, you know, you could have had people that had been employees for 20 years, you know, the redundancy um, costs on that is not, they're not small. And those things, those decisions need to be really calculated and planned a long time in advance. But I think people would be potentially surprised uh, at how, at how redundancy is based on factoring in uh, longevity of service um, and things like that. And obviously people's contracts and so on and so forth um, that they really need to be, need to be budgeted for. Um, so that's, I would suggest if companies, I mean, look, now we're at the third of set. September, early September. So, um, you know, October, the end of October when furlough ends is only eight weeks away. So, so um, I guess a tip would be for companies that, that are looking at that have done perhaps a financial forecasts as best as they can possibly do in this climate to look at it and, and really start planning and thinking, you know, um, are, do they have to make those tough decisions? And if they have to make those tough decisions to start really thinking about those now. Understood. And I think looking even beyond that into kind of the shock of, of furlough is over and the, the economic shock is over and, and kind of as the as people begin to recover, there's a feeling that um, perhaps there might be uh, some, some people listening to this, listening to the, as, uh, this conversation that we're having who uh, might have lost their jobs due to the crisis, but they have a big good skill set and they're actually now going to set up their own business uh, you know I know we've done a lot of work with recruitment agencies and a lot of recruiters are going out on their own at the moment um, what advice would you give uh, someone in that position about uh, you know they might be taking on staff from day one um, what advice would you give them about kind of getting support from us and specifically with payroll I guess yeah well um, <laughs> it's a funny one because um, as as was well publicized um, if i if I talk about the actual people themselves setting setting themselves up and then i 'll come on to employees that they may hire yeah. um, the actual people themselves so i guess, say publicized was that they in you know, limited companies traditionally sole director who who would perhaps take money out of a business with a small payroll and um, and large dividends were the ones who who were really not supported at all um, during this during this COVID um, crisis. And so um, not that I, mean, I believe that furlough or anything like that is going to ex extend beyond October as far as we're aware, um, but ne nevertheless, um, it wasn't, it, it hasn't been, um, I don't know fashionable is not the wrong word, but it's been, a di it's, been, it's been a challenge for those sorts of, those sorts of people. But that being said, when you set up at yourselves and if a limited company is the design, designed route and the preferred route, and, and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, then, then within that, you would certainly set yourself up in a payroll to pay yourself, um, you know, a certain amount. And that's something you discuss with your accountant um, on that. So you yourself would need a payroll, and then thereafter, as, as, as you rightly say, Nick, if you're getting um, employees, um, it's it's actually far more onerous now um, to just take on an employee than it, than it ever used to be, um, particularly with things like the pensions and um, there were some scarce there were some scare stories on that when it first came out when auto enrollment came out which um, effectively means that the employee employers are, are compulsory have to pay a contribution 
to um, um, to pensions, assuming that the employee hasn't opted out of, of pensions auto enrolment. And um, the the employer has to decide, well, which pension scheme am I going to put money in into? And if the if the, the scare story is worth it, if the employer decided off their of, of you know of their own uh, back to to put it into, for example, Nest, the government backed one, and Nest did disastrously. And as a result, you know, the employee's pension pot collapsed and there wasn't any money left. In theory, the employee can go to the employer and said, well, you, you didn't, you know, look after invest my money wisely. I'm going to sue you. And so um, we would always therefore recommend that to mitigate that risk, that you go to an IFA, um, an independent financial advisor to uh, review the market and get them to actually set up the pension scheme, removing the risk from yourselves that you had put the money into it, into a pension scheme off your own back and had done it based on the IFA recommendations. In, in conjunction with things like employment contracts as well, um, you know, and especially in this time, employment contracts are, are perhaps even more important um, than, than they ever have been. So there's the HR side of it, there's the pension side of it, as well, of course, and say the actual payroll payroll production side but these are things that even if we can't um, we we um, don't have the in-house expertise so for example we're not IFAs nevertheless we have a whole bank of experts and superstars that we can um, point uh, any new business in, in, into the various directions yeah and but, but the, the the element that we do assist a lot a lot of people with is those regular pension deductions which you know making sure they're done correctly and, and recorded on pay slips uh, correctly so we've, we've 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 talked about furlough we've talked about potential uh, redundancies and, and potential pitfalls around that um, we've talked about pensions there and we've talked about how to really get the most out of uh, this is true of accountancy but also the, the payroll department is really to be communicative and and be proactive and kind of give um that your your team that are ready and willing and stand to stand in support to you to really give them you know the heads up and, and really give them as much notice as possible and just be open with them do you think there's anything else we do we we need to share that, that, that we that's on the horizon or i think that that might be more than enough for the for the listeners to to take away um i think nothing in terms of as far as i'm aware in from a from a um, a technical perspective that's, that's, that's on the on the horizon. I mean, there's technological changes all the time. We've um, already for a number of years have used an app. Um, so all of the all of the um, for the payrolls that we do, all of the employees of those payrolls receive the pay slips on an app. We've been using again long before uh, GDPR came in in 2018, and all of the fun and games with that. We've been using client portals and how we share information so that we. Um, Sorry, sorry. Uh, um, so, um, um, yeah, so um, all, you know, because we are dealing with very precious data and, um, and therefore how we store it, how we keep it, how we transmit, how we communicate um, is, is very, very important. And data is, is becoming um, gets bigger and bigger impact. Um, it's very uh, topical every day around the world of how different either organizations or countries that are dealing with um, looking at people's data. So that's, that's, that's really important. I see that as, as growing even further. And that's something that is important when you're choo choosing your payroll bureau is to make sure that how are they dealing with personal data? How are they going to communicate? If they're just going to send the, for example, the payroll just by email, um, that to me doesn't sound too great. So, um, you know, th these are sorts of developments, personally, that I see coming up in the next year or so. Understood. Yeah, I think that is important to stress that with Davis Grant, you kind of get the, the security of, of, of the most up to date technology, te technological systems and, and knowledgeable, knowledgeable people that you wouldn't uh, knowledge and expertise that you wouldn't necessarily get from, you know, uh, a much smaller firm or, or even a, a, a much simpler kind of uh, payroll. Uh, bureau in, in my thing. The only thing I, I would say to listeners, uh, kind of wrapping up now, is um, 
as Stephen's touched on and as we touched on, you know, government, uh, especially in the coronavirus period, government announcements have come thick and fast and, and things are changing. So I would say if, you, um, if you're if you a Davis Grant client, uh, make sure you keep in touch uh, with your client manager and, or the partner uh, as appropriate kind of, uh, to keep up to date with things. But also from, from my end, make sure you're, you're monitoring our uh, website uh, davisgrant.co.uk where we've got a we've got a new lot of really good uh, blog content lined up for you so there is a wide range of business advice really interesting stuff coming through on there um, and we will e email you uh, with the really key key ones for please do uh, subscribe to our email newsletters which you can do at davisgrant.co.uk forward slash subscribe um, and uh, then uh, uh, and uh, keep up to date with us thank you very much for listening um, please do subscribe uh, to the podcast or um, to the YouTube channel um, you can find links on our website um, and thank you very much thank you very much for joining us Stephen pleasure, pleasure, thank you for asking me